It's 2024 and AMD's latest Ryzen 8000 mobile CPUs are making their way into high-end laptops like the Razer Blade 14 and ROG Zephyrus G14. Geekcom, however, is ahead of the game as the first to bring the powerhouse Ryzen 9 8940HS to the mini PC form factor. In this video, we'll dive into the Geekcom A8 to see how it stacks up against the competition and evaluates its ability to fully leverage the power of the Ryzen 9 APU. Let's do this. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ here with Elevated System, and it's that time of year to check out the next generation of mini PCs. Today, I've got the A8 from Geekcom. For those of you who might not be familiar with a mini PC, it's a relatively new form factor that incorporates mobile hardware into a tiny but powerful desktop package. They bridge the gap for people who don't necessarily need the all-in-one portability of a laptop, but don't have the space or want the hassle of a desktop tower PC. Traditionally, mini PCs have been a great choice for general home office work, remote work, web browsing, and media consumption. However, as mobile APUs integrate more powerful CPU and GPU cores and introduce neural processing units, the range and complexity of tasks these tiny PCs can handle are well beyond what the average user really needs. So, how has the latest Ryzen 8000 APU elevated the A8's potential? To find out, we'll quickly unbox the Geekcom 88, go over its specs and features, examine its performance in basic computing and gaming, compare it to a few other mini PCs, and evaluate its power demand, thermal and noise performance, and finally, I'll wrap up with my thoughts on the overall value of the Geekcom A8 mini PC. The box and unboxing is a very familiar experience as Geekcom has done its best to emulate the look of arguably the most famous of mini computers. From the minimal graphics on a plain white box to the overall shape and aesthetic of the A8 itself, it can fairly easily be mistaken for a mini Mac Mini. I will say, however, that A8 is pretty solidly built with a sturdy aluminum alloy chassis and a very tightly integrated I.O. Finally, a probably overlooked feature, the mini PC includes a very compact 120 watt GAN power supply. Jumping into the specs and features, the Geekcom A8 is the miniest of the mini PCs I've reviewed to date, measuring just 112 millimeters squared and 38 millimeters tall. The A8 is powered by a Ryzen 9 8945HS, an eight core 16 thread processor. The 8945HS includes integrated Radeon 780M graphics, a 12 core iGPU. The only difference between this APU and last year's Ryzen 9 7945 hs is the addition of a Ryzen AI neural processing unit, providing total AI processing of 39 teraops. In the review unit Geekcom sent over, there are 32 gigabytes of DDR5-5600 memory, a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD, and it includes Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. For ports and expandability, on the front, there are two 10 gigabit per second type A ports. On the left side, we have a full SD card reader. And on the back of the PC, there's the DC power input, two HDMI 2.0 ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, a 10 gigabit type A port, and one USB 2.0 type A port. Additionally, there's a USB 4 40 gigabit type C port and a 10 gigabit type C port, both of which include alt display port mode making the A8 capable of supporting up to four 8K displays. Setting up the A8 is super straightforward. Plug it in, connect the display, mouse, and keyboard if you're choosing, whether it's a traditional desktop setup or something more portable. Powering the system on, you're immediately greeted with the standard Windows 11 setup process. Once complete, it was nice to find that Geekcom has not overbloated the already bloated Windows with more bloatware. A quick update of the OS and drivers, and I was up and running really quickly. However, on the other side of the coin, the system is completely closed off with the only settings available in the UFEI being fan speed. So let's dive into how the A8 performs, but first, 
let's check out what we're comparing it to. First up is the Knopflink N600 featuring the Ryzen 9 5900HX, giving us a look at how the AH Zen 4 processor stacks up against last generation Zen 3 APU. With 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Next, we have the Geekcom IT12 featuring the Intel 1260P and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. Finally, because some of the results seemed a bit odd, I included my Framework 13. While it's not a mini PC, it provides insights into how the Ryzen 9 8945HS APU compares to its lower powered sibling, the Ryzen 7 7840U APU. First up, let's look at raw CPU performance. In Cinebench 2024, the A8, IT12, and Framework have single core scores within the margin of error of each other, while the older Zen 3 score drops by about 16% compared to the newer Zen 4. In multi-core performance, the A8 pulls ahead of the lower powered framework and the Intel PC as the 1260P only has four performance cores. The single core results skew slightly more in favor of the A8 in Geekbench 6, with it pulling 11 and 7% ahead of the IT12 and Framework, respectively, and 32% above the 5900HX, with multi core scores scaling accordingly. However, when we look at GPU compute performance, while the RDNA based iGPU in the A8 easily beats the older Vega iGPU of the 5900HX and the Intel Xe iGPU of the IT12, the Framework 13, which has the same exact Radeon 780M iGPU, pulls slightly ahead. We'll need to keep an eye on this. But let's move on to actual real-world workloads. In the Procyon Productivity Test, which measures the PC's ability to multitask in common office workloads using the Microsoft Office Suite, we see the E8 cooking the competition by as much as 50%. But to be completely honest, these results often come down to the difference of seconds or even microseconds. So for the average productivity tasks, the average user won't notice much difference. However, for those office gurus among you, those seconds do add up. Those seconds also add up in Photoshop, where again, we see the A8 pull ahead significantly. However, when we look at video editing in Premiere Pro, which relies more heavily on the iGPU, the A8 continues to outperform the Knopflink and IT at 12, but falls 28% behind the framework. Switching to pure 3D graphics performance in the 3D Mark Night Raid benchmark, the RDNA 3 based iGPU in the A8 takes a commanding lead of up to 51% over the older Vega and Intel Iris Xe graphics, but it comes in 16% behind the same iGPU in the framework's lower powered 7840U. This was the actual test that made me decide to compare the framework because I know the Ryzen 9 7940 HS has an average night raid score of about 31,000. So this is low and I know what most of my viewers want to know. How does that translate into actual gaming? Can you realistically game on the Geekcom 88? Let's take a quick look at a few less demanding and older AAA titles. Starting with Baldur's Gate 3 at 1080p low preset FSR performance, the A8 averages 42 FPS, which is very playable for this turn-based RPG. It stays ahead of the Knopflink and IT12, but the framework runs the game 62% better with an average of 68 FPS. Borderlands 3 tells a similar tale with the A8 taking up to a 33% lead over the other two mini PCs, yet falling 58% behind the framework. In Counter-Strike 2, while the A8 still leads the mini PCs by 50%, it finally takes its first lead over the framework, likely due to reaching the CPU limitations of the lower powered 7840U. CPU limitation also explains the horrible 1% lows of the Loftlink 5900HX based PC. In Doom Eternal, we're back to seeing the framework take a decisive lead over the A8 with the Knopflink and IT12 falling behind. 
In GTA 5, the Vega iGPU pulls within 5% of the A8, with the Iris XE 20% behind in this 11-year-old classic, while the A8 sits 35% behind the framework. Finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider tightens up the scores the most, with the A8 only falling 17% behind the framework. So why does the A8 underperform the framework in gaming and GPU demanding workloads despite having the same iGPU? Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll get to that question in a minute. Let's get back to the first question. Can you realistically game on the Geekcom 8.8? While you won't be playing the latest and most demanding AAA titles natively on the 8.8, as long as you're okay with dialing down the resolution and graphics settings, most other games, RPGs, esports, arcade style, console ports, and older titles that don't require blazing fast frame rates are all perfectly playable. My primary home for the Geekcom IT12 for the past year and the Nofflink N600 before that has been in my family room where I use it as a retro console emulator and Steam streaming box. I'm able to play all my favorite retro games from the NES through Xbox 360 and PS3 as well as arcade style games like Brawlhalla, Dave the Diver, and RimWorld natively on the mini PC. I also stream more demanding games from my gaming PC on Steam through my local network. So yes, you can realistically game on the A8 as long as you're realistically about your gaming expectations. Back to the discrepancy in graphics performance between the A8 and the framework and really why is the 8940HS in the A8 significantly underperforming? I honestly can't find an obvious cause. Both iGPUs are identical, using the same driver with the same driver settings. Both systems have identical memory kits with all the same timings. I scrutinized all the stats and the only difference I can find are that the A8's iGPU has about a 10 watt higher TDP, yet operates about 10 degrees cooler, which should be counter to the actual results. The only other difference is that the framework's Infinity Fabric and memory controller clocks are about 12.5% higher than the a 8 I don't have access to those settings in either system, and while I know the FCLK and UCLK speeds are crucial to Ryzen iGPU performance, a 200MHz bump seems a bit too low for the performance difference that I'm seeing. But that's my best guess for now. If I'm missing something completely obvious, please let me know in the comments. But now let's move on to what supposedly separates the Ryzen 8000 series from the previous year's model, AI performance. To test this, I ran the Procyon Computer Vision AI test, which runs five different machine learning inference models and calculates scores based on inference times and counts. Using the CPUs as the inference device, the A8 scores significantly higher than the rest. However, after collecting the gaming data, I went back and tested just the A8 and framework running the models on the GPUs, and again, the framework beats the A8 handily. Switching to an AI image generation test using Stable Diffusion and the Onyx Runtime Inference Engine, which should definitely take advantage of the Ryzen 8000's NPU, we finally see a win for the A8 over the framework. And while that's great, I don't really see anyone who's doing machine learning or running large language models locally looking at a mini PC like this for those workloads. As a quick example, my RTX 4080 Super, which is just a couple hundred dollars more than the Geekcom 88, scores a 3,917, generating images in about 1.6 seconds for an overall time of just 25 seconds compared to over 10 minutes for the A8. It's just not a serious tool for serious AI workloads. However, as AI accelerated features make their way into more of our daily use apps and operating systems, the NPU is becoming more useful. And finally, before I wrap up, let's quickly take a look at the thermal and sound performance of the A8. Since Geekcom didn't have to consider battery life and efficiency for the processor, they dialed the power limit to the max, ensuring it operates between 45 and 
55 watts in multi-core and heavy workloads. Despite this, they fitted the APU with an adequate cooler that keeps the 8945HS cool. I saw max temps of about 92 degrees, well below the 100 degree TJ Maxx. This does mean the system can get loud, however. The fan is very noticeable during heavy tasks or gaming, But during regular office work, web browsing, or media consumption, the A8 is dead silent. So with all the data I just presented, I have mixed feelings about the overall value of the Geekcom 88. I definitely appreciate its form factor, solid build quality, modular components and expandability, comprehensive port selection, and silent operation under normal workloads. However, there are a couple factors that have me questioning the overall value of the Geekcom 88. First is the lower than expected iGPU performance. Again, this is only a sample pool of one, but a 25% drop in GPU performance on average over the previous generation APU is pretty significant, especially when we're already limited to integrated graphics performance to begin with. The second factor is cost. At the time of filming, this A8 as configured costs $900 US, at that price, we're starting to approach the cost of similarly spec laptops. However, for those not looking at a laptop, Geekcom themselves somewhat undercut the value of the A8 with the Geekcom A7, which is the same exact mini PC with the Ryzen 9 7940HS. Same processor minus the neural engine. And the A7 only cost $829 for the Ryzen 9 model and just $700 for the Ryzen 7 model. So while the Geekcom A8 has some impressive specs and is definitely worth a look if you're interested in the latest hardware, the A7 may be a better value for your money. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more tech reviews and updates, and I'll see you in the next one.